Well, hey there everybody, how is it going? Thank you all for tuning in today. And today, it's all about this. I might as well just put this in front of my face because you don't even see me. We're talking about this. Now, um, I get a lot, and I mean a lot of questions about the Charvel. I did a video called My Rare Guitars where I talk about the Charvel, but I thought, you know what? There's so many questions that kind of warrants its own video like I did with the Les Paul. And that's what we're gonna do. So I wanted to talk about this. This is my uh, Charvel. I'm a huge Charvel fan, Warren D. Martini. One of my guitar idols this is the guy who got me into Charvels. And uh, so this is mine, and this is kind of a mutt. Uh, you know, this, I think that's why it catches people's attention, because most of them did not look like this. And, um... <sighs> All right, I'm sorry, guys, but it's really nice outside today, and I think we're gonna have to finish this video outside. Now we are talking, it looks, it looks even better out here, the, the natural light. So this is my Charvel, and I, like, so the reason I call it a mutt is because it's just kind of like a bunch of Charvels basically kind of thrown into one. Um, now the neck, I think this is what gets most people's attention is it has a maple neck on it. And um, I believe this is a Predator body. Maybe it's a 3DR. I can't remember exactly. Uh, well, the 3DR had Kalers. So maybe this is, I think this is a Predator. So basically these crackle guitars uh, pretty much all came, at least to my knowledge, I'm sure someone who knows more about Charvels will maybe chime in on this. But they pretty much all came with rosewood necks, either reverse headstock or normal, but they all had rosewood necks. Now the cool thing about Charvels back in the 80s, I don't know if it still rings true, but all the neck pockets were the same of the import. So like the MIJ, the Made in Japan uh, Crackles, you could change the necks. You could take a Model 2 neck and put it on your Model 1, Model 1 neck, put it on your Model 3. Other than, of course, the set neck <laughs> uh, models, but uh, those were um, a whole different thing. So this is actually a Model 1 neck. So the original owner of this is actually a person I know, a friend of mine, Bill. Um, he got it this way. He said the person who owned it before him broke the neck, I believe, and uh, they just replaced it with Model 1. Boom! You know, uh, the Charvels were thinking. And, um, and I love it because I love maple fingerboards. Now, if you look at the back of it, I don't remember if Bill did this or this is just how it came. It looks like someone took, you know, like sandpaper or steel wool, whatever it is. The neck feels amazing. You know, it's very comfortable. It just feels like a raw piece of wood, actually. Um, he did tell me I should probably oil it or it'll turn black. But you know what? I've been really lucky. My hands are like the most unacidic hands ever. Like I never clean maple fingerboards and they always just stay nice and clean. But, um, so yeah, so the only thing I don't like about this is it's a really tiny neck, you know, typical 80s flat, kind of like small neck. So it's a little bit uncomfortable to play, but I just love the guitar itself so much, I just kind of suck it up and play it anyways. So yeah, this was my buddy Bill's guitar, but I didn't get it necessarily from him. He actually sold it to a music store, Metronome Music. I used to teach there uh, quite a few years ago now. But uh, my buddy Russ, what's up Russ? I'll be texting you later, because we're supposed to hang out. Um, my buddy Russ texted me, I was asleep, and he's just like, dude, check out this guitar we just got in, and he sent me a picture of this. So wake, woke up, some crazy birds like freaking out back there. Uh, so I wake up, I get a text, and I'm like, huh? I'm like, dude, hold the guitar for me, I'll be right there. Went there, got it, uh, bought it, I remember they let me do like a payment plan on it or something like that. It, it was actually really cheap but I was a broke musician. <laughs> Wait, I still am. Dang it. But anyways, so that's how I ended up getting the guitar, was through Bill selling it to Metronome, Metronome then in turn selling it to me with my buddy Russ. And uh, it's just been here ever since and I pretty much plan on never getting rid of it. Uh, the pickup is a Seymour Duncan Custom Custom, so that's not the original pickup, of course. Um, it does have this Charvel neck pickup. No clue what kind it is. I actually think it sounds really good. I, I've thought about changing it before and then I just leave it. I'm like, you know what? It's, it sounds great. So, you know, don't fix what's not broken. Um, I did break, I did have a little switch on it here before that I broke uh, off at a show. Me and my buddy were ending, we had a, a band we were called, and had a, geez, I can't talk. A band I was in, we had a song called Going Solo where me and my buddy just traded off solos and we went to do like, we slid our guitars against each other. Mine got stuck in his guitar, <laughs> pulled this off, broke, I think it broke his string. And uh, you know, it was, it, was all, it was worth it though. It's all in good fun. Uh, it is a Jackson style Floyd Rose. So I actually like the top mounted Floyds a lot. 
uh, like this for some reason. It just sits more comfortably on my hand. And you have this weird locking nut. I'm sure someone can tell me about this. Uh, it's a Model 1. A lot of people ask me the year, and I don't honestly know the year of this guitar. Uh, I've always just said it's an 89. It's around there. But, yeah, that's just kind of, you know, the Charvel Jackson story I have with this one. I've, I've had a bunch of Charvels over the years, four or five. Uh, I've sold most of them. This one stays here. I should tell you the guitar's name. <sighs> wow, it's got crap all over it. Uh, maybe I should clean these guitars before I do these videos. Nah. Uh, so this guitar's name is Roxanne. And obviously, because you don't have to put on a red light. Roxanne! <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it. I love it. A volume knob. Ain't nobody got time for tone knobs. And this is the Charvel, man. You know, this is, this is a, a bona fide keeper. And uh, I love this guitar. No back plate. Not sure whatever happened to that. I would have taken it off anyways. So it's all cool. And uh, that's it. So this is the Charvel that you guys ask about. Um, if I missed anything or if I said something wrong about it, uh, I know there are other people who watch this channel who really know a lot about Charvels. And hopefully uh, they will chime in and kind of be like, oh, no, it's actually this. And feel free to do that. You know, I, I actually I really like that because I like to learn about these guitars. So other than that, guys, I think that'll be it for today. I'm going to go get some food with my son. He's looking at me right there. Look at you. And uh, I think we're going to bounce on out of here. So hopefully you enjoyed the video, enjoyed the song. Um, I guess if you want to know the tones for the song, I was running out of the Charvel. All the guitars were Charvel. Charvel. <laughs> All right, that's my Southern coming out. Um, our Charvels going into the Rev uh, Generator 740, and it was going into the Two Notes Torpedo Live and with a Rev 4x12 cabinet. So there you go. Oh, and then uh, some of the delay and reverby parts were actually the Wampler Ethereal. So yeah, I'm just gonna bounce on out of here, guys. Peace out. Rock on. Woo. I haven't you wanna... been in a video for a while. I know. You haven't been in one for a while. Do you want to say hi to everybody? Hi. Hi. You want to rock out for a second? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Love you, dude. Love you, guys.